Hello and welcome to our Thursday Reflection. The passage from scripture that I'm going to read today is Luke chapter 1 verses 57 to the end. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy and they shared her joy. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, There's no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment wrote, His name is John. Immediately. His mouth was opened and his tongue set free and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbours were filled with awe and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And as always, we thank God for his word. The heading in my Bible for that passage says the Song of Zechariah. But the words are better known to us as the Benedictus, a canticle which has been part of Christian worship for at least 1600 years. It was sung by the monks in the monasteries. At the time of the Reformation, Cranmer put it into the Book of Common Prayer, and we continue to say it each day at morning prayer. In fact, I've said it so often that there's a danger about a danger that I may be just saying the words instead of thinking about what I am saying. So today I welcome the opportunity to look at the words more closely. Not long ago, the Archbishop of Canterbury got into trouble, again, for speaking out about plans to send migrants to Rwanda. And the usual cry went up, keep religion out of politics. The church has no right to speak about such matters. Well, the church not only has the right, it has an obligation to speak about ethical matters, not party political, but ethical matters, where especially where they may be considered counter to the will of God. Some may not agree with what the Archbishop said, that is a matter of personal conscience, but his right to comment on such matters is part of the job. Zechariah, of course, would not have recognised any division between faith and state. His song expressed joy on the birth of his son, at the same time as remembering and giving thanks for all that God has done, not only for him, but for all God's people. He begins by praising God just as the prayer Jesus taught us begins with praise. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. How often do our prayers begin with praise? Are we sometimes so eager to bring all our worries and concerns to God that thanksgiving and praise are just add-ons before we sign off, as it were? Zechariah speaks several times in different ways about salvation. But for him, it's not a question of individual salvation, just as we may sometimes speak about someone, an individual being saved. He speaks of God's salvation moving through society. For him, salvation is a personal call to individuals only as they are involved in the transformation of God's community. The call is to follow as God guides our feet into the way of peace, making us vessels of light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. God calls us to salvation as we physically, politically and economically show forth God's justice and love in our relationships with family, society and the wider world. The Benedictus looks to the past, as Zechariah speaks of God's historic salvation story. It speaks of the immediate future, as he prophesies that his newborn son will go before the Lord to prepare his way. It speaks indirectly of Jesus, who will bring salvation to all through the forgiveness of sins. And it calls on us to bring the light of Jesus to those still living in darkness and in the shadow of death, as we pray that he will guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we come to you with praise and with thanksgiving for all those who, like Zechariah, have had the vision and the courage to speak your word, to pronounce your judgment, to make known your mercy and to proclaim your love. May we accept our calling to prepare the way of the Lord in and through our own lives and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.